Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am really excited to do this video today because it's been a minute since I've updated you on my life and where we are at as a new mom, where I am at, and Bowie is six months old. She is half a year, people. I don't know how that happened. I don't know how half an entire year has gone by since this beautiful little creature has entered our world, but it has been incredible, not without its lows, not without its crazy roller coaster ride of emotions. And as you know, with all of my updates since I started doing these since I was pregnant, I'm always super upfront with you guys and keep it real, you know, because we're all going through it and there's enough bull crap out there on social media and all that good stuff, making life look perfect and pretty at all times. And that's just not the way it is. So let's just dive in to the past six months. It has been absolutely crazy, you guys. I did a three month update video with my husband. First three months is crazy for sure. Um, because it's also new, but I feel like I may have actually been through more emotionally in the latest three months. So in that three to six month window than I even did in the first three months, because the first three months is a blur. Like you don't even know what's going on. You're like, where am I? What poopy diapers, this, that sleeplessness, like, okay. You know, and you're kind of running on adrenaline of the excitement of being a new parent and having this beautiful little creature that you get to have and hold forever. The next three months is kind of when society expects you to kind of get back to reality a little bit, but reality is so different now than what reality was before baby was here. Figuring out who you are as a parent and differentiating that from who you were as you knew it before baby arrived is a trip, you know, because those two people are so vastly different. So while you do feel yourself kind of getting back to yourself at a certain point in that three to six month window, that new you is also so different and will never be the same as who you were before your baby was here. And that's kind of like, pardon my French, but a mind fuck, you know, you, you don't really know quite how to process that. Also in that three to six month window, really for me more so in that five to six month window is when sleep deprivation really starts to hit. Like I said, in that first few months, you're kind of like just running on adrenaline. So grabbing those tiny bits of sleep when and where you can is okay. It's enough. But in that four to six month window is really when the sleep deprivation hit me hardest because it was months of no sleep, you know, not sleeping for more than really most of the time, like a two and a half, three hour window. Um, sometimes I got lucky and there was like a four hour chunk in there and those would be my better days, but it all adds up and it really starts to kind of just drain you and take away from your spirit, you know, and also your mind, like the brain fog, the cloudiness that I was starting to feel around the five month mark work is something I was not prepared for. All of a sudden I couldn't focus on anything at all. You know, I really couldn't. I was trying to juggle work stuff so much because I am self-employed. So, you know, if I stop working, that's it, you know, like there is no maternity leave pay or anything like that. So I really wanted to kind of like keep everything in motion when Bowie first arrived and I was juggling it all fine for a while. And then all of a sudden I was like, oh my gosh, I can't even hold a conversation, let alone create content, let let alone, you know, stay focused enough to respond to emails or innovate, you know, new ideas and new paths for myself. I just, I couldn't focus. That was really hard for me because I am such a hard worker. It's like in my blood, it's in my bones. I just thrive. I feel so much better about myself when I know I'm moving the needle forward professionally. And that wasn't happening because my brain had just turned to mush. So much of my identity has been based on my career, you know, my career goals, my career successes and all of that stuff. So I was like, oh my gosh, who am I? You know, who am I as this new mom? And then in the same breath, all of a sudden 
you really realize like how drastically your priorities changed. I used to, like I said, tie my identity so closely with career stuff. You know, if I was thriving in my career, then I was doing well. That was like my thumbs up, my pat on the back for myself. That's who I was. That's what gave me confidence. And now it doesn't in the same way. Like I still value who I am as an individual and I value my career. It's super important to me, but there's something now that takes precedence over all of that stuff. Whether I'm thriving or whether I am feeling like I'm not succeeding or whatever, this little girl doesn't care. She doesn't give a shit. She doesn't care at all if I nailed that audition or if I flopped at that audition or if I booked that next amazing role or if I didn't or whatever. She doesn't care. You know, she just needs me. She just needs me. She needs that love. She needs affection. She needs to play. She needs to learn and grow. And I am so in love with every step of that process, you know, and being a part of that for her. So it's really kind of put everything I've known about myself and life flipped it 180 because I'm like, whoa, you know, that's all taking a back seat now. What does that look like for us moving forward? I don't know, to be honest, you guys, I really don't know. You know, I've heard so many moms who were so career driven and all of that before baby who like, don't even want to go back to work or, you know, only ever go back to work part time. And I've never understood that. Cause I'm like, my career comes first. I love working. I, you know, whatever, like, again, my identity is so tied to my career and all of that stuff. And now I get it. I'm like, I want to be there. I want to be there for every first, all of the new things. I want to watch her experience things for the first time or struggle through things and then accomplish them. And, you know, I want to be there when she wakes up. I want to be there when she goes to sleep. I, I want to be a part of all of it. I'll be totally candid with you. Like, when I was pregnant, I really thought I was going to go back to work immediately. I, I had still not found out that my show, The Detail, had been canceled yet. So I was pregnant and waiting to see if we got picked up for a second season or not. At that point of not knowing if we were going back for a second season or not, I knew that if we did, they wanted to go back immediately. You know, they really wanted to dive right back into filming. So I was like, yeah, no problem, guys. Like six weeks tops tops. And that's like, if, you know, I have to have an unexpected C-section, which I did, or, you know, whatever, something goes wrong, there's a complication, but six weeks tops. And I will be back there. I will be filming. And when I was filming, I was a lead on that show. I worked five days a week for a minimum of 13 hours a day. That means I wouldn't see my child. You guys, that means that I would not be there when she woke up and I would not be there when she went to sleep. That's an entire day of missing her, missing so many important moments. And now that she's here, I'm like, what the hell was I thinking? First time ever that I would have been grateful to receive bad news about a show getting canceled, you know, because it all worked out for the better. It's allowed me to be here and be present and form this incredible bond with her. So, you know, all of the stuff aligned. Everything happens for a reason. It's definitely made me question what I'm going to do moving forward. I don't know the answer to that yet. I really don't. And I've never been in this boat before. Your priorities do change so much and it totally shifts your perspective on everything. Another area that it shifts your perspective on is friends. People have been amazing when I was pregnant and amazing during those first three months of having a baby that have completely fallen off the map because I think everyone thinks to check in in those first few months and then the phone calls and the text messages slowly start to dwindle away. And I think maybe that's like around the time that people think like, oh, you've got to figure it out. You've got to handle on this. But really it's a time that you need the most support in my opinion, because there aren't all those phone calls coming in. There aren't all those visits from family. You are, you know, being hit with sleep deprivation and exhaustion harder than ever, because it's all kind of like accumulated to this point of sheer exhaustion kind of shifts your perspective on who steps up and who steps back and out. And you go, oh, Okay. And at the end of the day, it's really this family unit now. And there's a lot about that, that yes, can be frustrating, but 
I always say you can't change people. You can only change your expectations of them. Those are words to live by. But also it kind of gives me a lot of pride in like our tiny little family unit. You know, me and Josh are so solid. Thank God. Um, he is a rock to me, to us. And um, it's really brought us closer together because we do feel like we're in this alone. You know, we are, we're doing it and we are doing it every day. And it's down to us to keep her safe, make her smile, you know, help her grow, help her learn. And we like high five at the end of the day, you know, like we did it another day of, you know, amazing times with this baby girl. She goes to sleep. She goes to sleep happy. She goes to sleep healthy, fed. Um, and that's an accomplishment and we're doing it just together, you know? So it's good and bad that comes with everything as is with anything in life. But, um, yeah, definitely shifts my perspective on the people in our circle or people who were in our inner circle that have kind of stepped back. Another thing that's happened in that last three to six month window of Bowie's life that a lot of people have asked me about on social media is my body. <laughs> um, you know, I started working out again at four months postpartum. I waited a little bit longer um, than was necessary perhaps, but it's how long I needed to A, feel rested enough to kind of add that new layer into my day-to-day -day routine. And also it was the time that I felt ready physically because I did have an unexpected C-section that did have complications. So everything was still feeling a little bit jumbly and weird in there um, until that four month mark. And I was like, okay, I feel like I can handle this now. I feel like I can take this on. It has honestly been one of the best things for me as far as feeling like myself, feeling confident, feeling good and happy and energized every day. It gives me so much energy on the days that I do get to work out. So it's been an amazing journey so far. Don't get me wrong. It is definitely still a work in progress. I don't think I'll ever fit into my pre-mom jeans and I'm okay with that. I feel stronger and better and honestly more confident in my body than I ever, ever have in my entire life. And I am not in that jean size. So it's not necessarily something I'm aspiring to fit back into. I think I'm in like better shape shape than I've ever been in in my life. Now that's not to say I'm the slimmest that I've ever been in my life or the skinniest or whatever. Um, I don't look the same in my clothes that I did before having Bowie, but I feel stronger. I feel like I actually have muscle, you know, I have that strength and I need that. It makes me feel better when I go to pick Bowie up out of her crib or um, you know, carrying around her, her car seat with her in it. And, you know, eventually when I'm getting to run around and chase after her or play with her in the park, like feeling strong is going to make me feel so much better doing all of those things and being active and present with her. So it's something that I really want to maintain. Why I'm also doing it for myself is it gives me that little bit of me time. You know, I still haven't, I'm like embarrassed to show you, but I still have not gotten a manicure since I had Bowie. I haven't gotten a facial. I haven't gotten a massage. And it's not because I can't, like my husband on a weekly basis is like, please go get your nails done. Like do stuff for you. Like we're good. I want to treat you to that. But it's not what's most important to me right now. And that little bit of me time to feel like not only am I bettering myself for myself, but I'm also bettering myself for my daughter. I don't feel so guilty about taking that me time then. And it just allows me that little bit of quiet headspace. So my preferred time to work out is actually around like 5.30 in the morning before Bowie's up on a good day. Some days I don't get to do that because she wakes up super early or she had a rough night's sleep and I need the sleep or whatever. But um, when she's having a good night and she's gonna stay asleep until 6.37, I try to get up at five and bang out my workout before like 6.30. So. Those mornings are amazing because it's still dark outside. You know, not a lot of other people are awake yet. And there's just something really awesome about like that private time with yourself. So I know it sounds insane to people who don't run on that kind of early schedule, but I urge you to try it because it honestly has been like the most peaceful time for me to kind of be alone with myself and have that me time. Also side note, the workout that I have been doing, I've mentioned it a couple times. It's 
called BBG. It's the, I think it's like the bikini body guide. It's Kayla Etzinez. It's an app on your phone so you can do it anywhere. There's not a lot of equipment required and it's only a 30 minute workout. It's intense. It's intense. I'm noticing a difference. My butt is finally like lifted up and separated from my thighs just a little bit. Still got room to go, but uh, it's nice to see that my butt and thigh is not one body part. It's actually two separate body parts. I forgot that for a little while. <laughs> Check it out for sure. This is not sponsored or anything like that. I'm sure Kayla had seen us, has no idea who I am, but um, it's an amazing workout for anyone looking for something new. Another new thing that's happened in the past few months, I already did a video kind of on this subject, which is finding a nanny. Finding a nanny is something that Josh and I struggled with. We knew we needed that help if we were gonna start getting back into work mode and all of that stuff. So we did need help and we did know that, but like I said, you don't want to miss any moments with your little one. And so kind of giving into that and, you know, kind of embracing that we were going to have some outside help and we were going to be stepping out of the picture for a few hours a day here and there was a struggle for us. You know, we wanted to be those parents that could do it all. And I think we do a lot but it's just not possible to do it all. We had to give ourselves a little bit of a break and we think we finally found a nanny that Bowie really loves and she smiles as soon as she sees her and they have a good time together. I love her too, which is like bonus points. What was most important to us was that Bowie did. So we're winning across the board and just having her part-time for just a few hours, a few times a week makes such a difference in what you can get done and therefore what you can do with your daughter in the time that you do have with her. Like we can be so much more present for her. We can focus on just her and playing with her and reading to her and going outside and taking in nature with her because we're not trying to juggle a million things. We've got designated work time and we've got designated Bowie time. And I think Bowie's getting a lot more out of Bowie time now that we have that help. I think my biggest takeaway over the last three to six month window of having a daughter and being a new mom is how important the bond between myself and my daughter is. I just assumed that that bond, you know, comes naturally, which it does to a certain extent, but it's also a bond that needs to be nurtured. To see my daughter now in the past three to six months, how her face lights up as soon as her daddy enters the room. I mean, literally Josh walks into the room. He doesn't have to do or say anything. He just looks at her and her eyes smile. You know, she's got this giant grin on her face. She laughs at him constantly. She thinks he's like the funniest guy in the world. He is pretty funny. And for my bond with her, you know, I'm comfort. I'm mom, you know? and to see that happen. I know how I feel about my mom and already I can see that she feels that way with me. When she's upset, when something startles her, when she's not comfortable with somebody or whatever, it's like instantly looking to find me. It doesn't matter how hard she's crying. As soon as I pick her up and hold her on me, the crying stops, she chills out. I'm like, that is the coolest thing. I'm like getting emotional now. That is like the coolest thing. That's something that, I don't know, you, you can't even imagine how that feels until you experience it yourself. I'm struggling to put it into words because I can't. I can't put it into words. It is this intangible emotion that just completely overwhelms you. I had a moment like that last night. Like she woke up from her sleep. I guess she had a bad dream, something she was crying. And then I just like picked up this like soft and perfect, tiny, little, beautiful, adorable being. And as soon she just gave me one look and then just like curled in the crying stopped and she was just completely relaxed and at peace. And that was because I'm her mom. How cool is that? Like I said at the beginning of this video, I always keep it real with you guys and it's not to sound like I'm complaining or I'm being negative or anything, but there's highs and lows with everything in life and I always wanna share that with you candidly because I know I'm not the only one feeling these things. So we're all in it together, you guys. However exhausted you are or however kind of alone you feel in moments or not supported or whatever you might be going through, honestly, there is nothing better 
in the world than seeing your little person flourish and be happy and laugh. And those are all first in this three to six month window, you know, them really smiling, them having like gut belly laughs, them starting to learn and grow and pick things up and put things together that they didn't in that zero to three month window in that four tri- fourth trimester. And it's an incredible thing. It really is. It just, it makes you see the world and life through a brand new set of eyes. So yeah. That's where I'm at. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Mwah!